You are listening to Joygasm, a video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, Xbox Live Toaster360. He, of course, is Steve, Xbox Live Steve Avinch, and we have stepped out of our javelins in episode 107 today, February 1st, 2019. We're going to be foregoing gaming and movie news once again. Instead, after we have our little howdy duty time, we are going to go into our topic of the day, which is going to be our Anthem demo play impressions, which I'm very much looking forward to talking to all of you about. And maybe even uh, with you too, Steve. You hmm. never know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, happy Friday. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course, to so what everyone's going to listen, this is going to be Monday. So it's like, yeah, we get a weekend. But uh, now that everyone's listening this start of the week, it's um, Monday. Well, maybe they can just fantasize if it was Friday all yeah, over you again. Yeah, got five more days. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, tomorrow is Groundhog Day. Hmm. So it could very well be that maybe Friday as a day just gets repeated endlessly over and over and over again. Although I do wonder, would the kind of euphoria that surrounds the day of Friday lose its luster? Bill Murray needs to go out there and read and interpret if the groundhog sees the shadow or not. Absolutely. And from here on out. And we are not going to know that at this recording session because Groundhog Day is tomorrow, if Ah. I'm not mistaken, not today. Uh So something to look forward to and uh, find out. Steve, what's going on in your world? (laughs) I'm going to wake up and be like, oh, oh, where's my phone? I got to see if the Groundhog saw it. Shut up. Uh, uh, (laughs) No updates. I'll go back to sleep. Uh, You know, it's actually, (laughs) speaking of Groundhog Day... It would actually be really cool if it did happen just because that would mean that we would get to be able to play the Anthem demo, which made itself available this weekend again in, uh, what is it? Perpetuity? Is, is that the correct word? I'm not exactly sure. It'd be a, a perpetual joy of a gasm to be able to wake up time and time again to be able to play it. Although <laughs> I imagine there would probably be a point where I'm like, okay, I kind of want the full game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm tired of playing the same two levels. Uh, yeah. Is there anything more to this planet besides this finite space? Indeed. <clears throat> well, last podcast, Russ, I left here, went home and finished the movie Drive with uh, the Goslinger. Did it have gas to spare or did it run out prematurely? It ran out prematurely. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know who it had in it is that dude who plays Marlon from from uh, Finding Nemo. Uh-huh. And he's a bad guy. And he really? Was, and he was dropping F-bombs. Oh, Marlon. <laughs> Say it isn't so. The daddy finally cracked. Oh, man. So, anyhow, I mean, the movie wasn't bad. It, it just didn't go anywhere. I thought with a movie like Drive, there would be some car driving sure. good scenes and stuff and mm-hmm. it just didn't kind of it just didn't really travel didn't go anywhere gotcha its destination was short-lived uh-huh yes so yeah i don't know if i really recommend that one the beginning though was pretty cool the beginning really sets the tone and that's where i was at but yeah Nah, it didn't really go anywhere. Netflix said I'd give it a two-star. I probably would give it a two-star. Okay. And speaking of which, I dropped that thing in the mail, and I haven't got anything since. Netflix, it's taking so My long. My goodness. Man. There's a hint of self-entitlement Man. to your tone of the voice. We'll run out there, have to get home from work. <laughs> Mailbox. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's right up. A little snotty nose. You know, complaining email to them. <laughs> you guys, you send first world problems. <laughs> so anyhow, um, inconvenienced. That's what I've been watching. I went back to Red Dead. I'm telling you, I'm near the end, Russ. Woo-hoo-hoo! And I'm on epilogue two. There was times where I forgot to save it, so I've had to replay it a couple times. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to you about yeah. all that's transpired in the chapter five, chapter six, epilogue one and epilogue two. Uh, I talked to a guy at work, and he says, he goes, which ending did you get? I said, oh, I had the ending that, you know, X, Y, and Z. He goes, oh, 
you know, I got the ending and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. he goes, that this happened. And I look at him I'm like, <laughs> man, you gotta be kidding me. I thought that was, you go, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Just take the words back. You know, I'll forget I heard everything. So anyhow, um, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still taking my, well, I'm almost done with it. So I'm probably done with it by the weekend. And then I started Resident Evil, my copy. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. If you, I'm not sure if, if we actually mentioned that or not. And originally, oh, we did. A few episodes ago, Steve had let me know that he had ordered, he had pre-ordered the game and it was supposed to be arriving the day of via Amazon. However, there was no sight of the game. And at the time, we were planning on actually focusing that particular episode on the Anthem demo, but then the Anthem demo was... Kaput. Yes, it did. Uh, it was not cooperating. So we had to think of something fast, and I thought, <laughs> Plan oh, C. Digital download. Got it. Oh, I'm going to download this, and then we'll be able to play it, and uh, RE2 save the day. So now you have your own copy as well, and uh, apparently you have started playing as Claire since you've been playing as Leon at Mikasa. Mm -hmm. And it's been going quick because I've had to stumble through everything here. <laughs> and so then I go back, I'm like, yeah, I know what to do. I could run past that guy. Oh, I could shoot that guy. Okay, I'll go get this and you know, I'm making shortcuts everywhere. I'm like past where I am right here. Oh, wow. So anyhow. Look at this guy. He's a veteran, hey, this guy. Hey, all right. It's all coming back to me. Hey, yeah. forget about it. Hey. So... One thing that I, I don't really care about with that game is when you get, when the zombie has you and you are and you let out a scream like, oh no, I'm going to get bit. There's a few seconds where nothing happens and then the zombie like continues its <laughs> animation to bite you. I'm like, come on, come on. Yeah. Anyhow, Claire, Claire doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, Andrew. So... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she doesn't have the, the shotty. She doesn't get the shotgun. At least not yet. Well, that's just not fair. She's got a uh, she got the launcher. The she's rocket got, launcher? And she's not not a rocket launcher. Grenade, grenade launcher. launcher. Yeah. Well. Yes. That's not exactly a disadvantage. I would no. Say. I would wager it would probably even the odds. Yes. Yes. It does. There was one time when I when I finally got to the liquor. The, oh, yes. And I went in the room, where in that little side room, and I was picking up stuff because I knew shotgun rounds would be in there, and now they're like flame like grenades that you can get. Uh -huh. And so I got some, but it, it couldn't fill up in my inventory. You know how it keeps on, it keeps on adding to your ammunition? Add on, add on, add on. Well, I guess I filled up the square <laughs> that I couldn't get anymore. I didn't have an empty square, so I put one back huh. on the desk. And so I left, I shot the thing, came back, I'm like, oh, I'll get the extra round that's chilling there, and it took it away from me. Hmm. I'm like, man, what gives? Sheep. So with your play experience with Claire, are you literally going through the exact same- Pretty much, yes. Pathways and everything? Yes. Or is it, for some reason, I thought that she had a completely different navigation through the, the, the police headquarters and- Yeah, and the beginning of the game, I. You, like the very, very beginning of the game, Leon, I think, goes to the diner. And then when you get to Raccoon City, I think um, he, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think one, one person goes to the diner and the other person goes to the gas station. I thought, I thought you were in a diner at some point. Maybe that, that's coming up, but hmm. um, I remember at some point you get to a, a weapon shop, like a, like a, like a you know, gun shop. Sure. And everything's on fire and whatnot. Maybe that's coming up. I don't know. I got to get out of the, the, the Raccoon City you know, police station. So anyhow, but yeah, it's basically the same game. You're in the police station. So. Okay. Yeah. I imagine I'll probably play as Claire just to have some hands-on experience with the game. Because the game does look like a lot of fun. Yeah. I'll probably wait till I, I get done enjoying watching you play through. And then I'll, I'll give it a go. And, yeah. And then you can enjoy watching me try to survive <laughs> through the Raccoon City. No, they don't give you much ammunition. That's uh, that's a definite, I don't know, difference from the first game to the last game. I had like 
bullets for days. I'm like, ah, <laughs> shoot it as I go. <laughs> You're pointing Strip. your gun sideways at yeah, the zombies. Really. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to Mac 10 it all the way up to the <laughs> station. <laughs> Tripping over shells. They're everywhere. Uh, well, tell me, Russ. Mm. What have you been doing? So I started playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, I have yet to. I, that's just chilling there installed. I'm going to warn you, Steve. It. Yes. Things are not rosy. They, they always start off pretty unrosy, Russ. Well, no. I, I, allow me to elaborate. Well, how are you going to do this? Because I don't want to hear any spoilers. No, 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 no. I'm not, not going to go into any spoilers or anything. I, I quite frankly, have, uh, haven't gotten very far into the game. The issue is I have been spoiled by Red Dead Redemption 2's right. production value and right. gameplay experience. Yeah, right. I'm really wishing that I had somehow played through Assassin's Creed Odyssey first, right? then go into Red Dead, simply because Red Dead has introduced such a new level of expectation when it comes to like graphic fidelity and animation quality and just voice acting quality. I mean, ju just everything about the game is so well done that it's a huge step backwards to play a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In fact, you know, I started out as I decided to play as the female lead, and you get to choose a horse. I am telling you, the horse riding experience is so stiff in that game, <laughs> and the animation is also just really rigid and not natural looking at all. The way that the horse traverses over the ter like just the environment and the terrain and stuff is just so unrealistic. I mean, I mean, I really struggled with keeping at it for the the time I was playing the game. It was crazy. The other issue too that I I noticed, and this is something that I think Ubisoft just has as a general rule a problem with, and that is the level of cussing in the game. Yeah. It is the most bizarre thing, but like this game takes place in ancient Greece. Now I understand like back in the Greek language, they probably had some sort of cussing and that sort of thing, but this game is, is in English. And typically speaking, like like when you have some, some kind of conversation, you're, you're not just constantly like, for lack of a better w word or way of saying it, a potty mouth. But in their games, it's like they just kind of just casually throw out the F-bomb everywhere. And it's like, guys, <laughs> you don't have to go full <laughs> tilt every single time you want to do that. Save it for the pirate game, guys. Well, it's just awkward because it's like, okay, in normal speech, you don't... That's not the correct timing to use that word. Like, it's, it's just... Again, if I compare it, to give you guys an idea, if I compare that to Red Dead Redemption 2, because Red Dead also had cussing in it. However, the, the timing of when those words were used and the manner in which they were used reflected intense situations or raised tempers. It just, it made more sense versus I'm in the middle of like, say buying or trying to get a horse or I'm talking to a person who <laughs> owes me money of some kind or whatever and it, there's no fighting or anything it's, and it's just how the I, F you doing today? Yeah! Hey, wait, what? I'm just like, what? what is the deal? <laughs> and in the, I started thinking also about how at their, their previous E3s, they've also had a problem with that, with like the, the host, whoever it was I was emceeing, also, just, I mean, they have this infatuation with the F-bomb. People are effing scared, okay? <laughs> Audience. It's just, it's it's so weird. Now, to be fair, like, I think this most recent E3, they toned it back. So it wasn't as crude as, as it has been for the last, like, three or four years. But still, it's like, okay, look, I'm not necessarily against cussing in a game. Just do it in a way that's organic, that feels like how a normal conversation would progress. Don't just 
throw it in there because you want to get some some kind of junior high street cred. <laughs> like, look, look what we threw in there multiple times at random places. I mean, it was just weird. So anyway, there was that. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, South Park Edition. <laughs> yeah. So I am here to tell you, Steve, that I don't know if I can actually play through that game. Mm. And it's, and you know, all the, the it's that painful. awkward. Well, it, the, the, the biggest issues I have are, are just the graphics and the gameplay themselves. Like it just, I think bef- it, had I played that game before I had played RDR two, I would have enjoyed it. I would have been like, yeah, okay, this is fun, whatever. I don't, you know, I, I don't think I would have thought it was as good as say horizon zero dawn in terms of like traversing, uh, various terrain and that sort of thing. Cause I thought that that game did such an excellent job of uh, presenting the environment that way. But I, I think I still would have had fun playing it. And, th- and there are moments like, like you'll have some sort of dialogue scenes and they, they throw in some of the more cinematic graphics for the characters. And those look nice. But I even talked to uh, Shawnee Sean. Mm hmm who is a big Assassin's Creed fan okay. and he had also played Assassin's Creed Odyssey. He said the same thing. He, he, I think he got about halfway through and he said, I couldn't play the game anymore. <laughs> I had to put it down. I'm like, why is that? And he said, just because I'm too spoiled by RDR two, I have seen what is capable with a game, like an adventure game, like this action adventure game. Yeah. And I just, I cannot play a game that, is is now completely dated. You know, that brings up a, a good point because I was thinking the same thing with Resident Evil. And Resident Evil, of course, there's a bunch of nostalgia for it. So there is some forgiveness there. However, in the earlier game, the, the first version of the game, there was no cussing in it. And it was just, oh my gosh, you know, zombies, let's get out of here. Yeah. You know, sort of thing. <laughs> and now every time that a zombie's coming at you, whether regardless if it's Leon or Claire, uh, she's always cussing. They're always like, you son of a bitch, you yeah. shit. Like every time, every, I'm like, you guys, okay. You know there's zombies by now. You know you're in perilous danger by now. You shouldn't be that surprised. Just defend yourself. You Although know? I can say that I would see, I could see people having that kind of response every time because I mean, zombies are nasty, gross, scary looking creatures who want to eat you. Yeah, but the same dialogue every single time. Well, it's just difficult to know. Steve. I wasn't there for you during. What was was Claire cussing up a storm for yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, it does the man. same thing. Oh. Like cussing like a sailor. Man, you <laughs> kiss your mom with that mouth. So oh. yeah, no, I definitely know what you mean. Definitely no. Oh, but, but here's the deal: they spent a lot of time making Red Dead. I mean, they were doing. I mean, the dialogue itself from that video I showed the other day took five years. Mm. It's a lot of time. Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed takes a year or two at most. Maybe maybe they haven't backlogged a little bit, but there's an Assassin's Creed in almost every one to two years. Sure. And it drops in price uh, after six months. So yeah. Well, and half. I think I got um, uh, Odyssey on sale. Yeah, well, I, got, I definitely purposely I, bought it on sale. Yeah, I think I got it at something like... 35% yeah. off or something like that? Yeah, 30 bucks. Oh, I got it at 30 bucks or 30, 35 on Black Friday. Okay. And I went back into Best Buy just to kind of check. Uh, actually, I was in Target. I'm ashamed to say. Ooh. I was in Target and I was looking around and even Grand Theft Auto 5 is still at like 40 bucks. The game's been out that for a long time. That game has been so successful. And Assassin's Creed hasn't even been out a year and it's down at 2999 weekend special, baby. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. So, uh, yeah, all the Assassin's Creed they 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 come out hot and then they go stale. So uh, changing gears here a bit, I managed to put some time into Forza. Good old Forza 4, Fortune Island. What do you think? It is a lot of fun. Why is that? So one of the things I really appreciate is the environmental effects. They now have a lot more storms going on around the island. So you have a lot of lightning crashes, a lot of the uh, the, the big... Uh, storm cloud esque kind of thing. The the island itself, while not very large, has a lot of fun tracks on it. And I've managed to to play. I would say about three races, 
I'm digging it. I think it's great. I think it's a nice addition to the overall game that is Forza 4. Do they have a different Hot Wheels section, Russ? They don't have, to my knowledge, <laughs> I don't think that they're bringing back the Hot Wheels. I think that uh, that is exclusively a Forza 3 that's unfortunate. edition. But, I mean, it makes it special because you can go back to Forza 3 and play through, uh, what was it, Australia? Yeah, it was Australia. Oh, yeah. Well, which, yeah. But that would be something cool to look forward to if they had like other Hot Wheels stuff mm. that was coming out with the newer games. I mean, that would be like, oh man, for Forza 3, it was pretty awesome. And now with this one, they got this. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. Of course, going back to uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake, it was a lot of fun to be able to watch you do your thing on our Twitch stream earlier this week on Wednesday night. You did get a little stumped, though. Like, we were trying to yeah. figure out what to do next, and while there were a, a few little intense situations, for the most part, we were kind of at that phase of the game where there's a lot of puzzling to be unpuzzled. Right. You know, I shot all the zombies. Okay. I used all the keys. Okay. Yeah. Now what do I do? But I figured it out. So by next Twitch... I'm looking that's, forward to it, Steve. Well, that's if we continue to play the game, because we might play, maybe play something else by that point, Ross. Well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure what I would play. I mean, I would, well, there's plenty of things uh, at our disposal, but I don't know. It's very rare to have you come over here in the evenings and be able to play any sort of game, Steve. So the fact that we have Resident Evil 2 at our beckoning call, I don't know. <laughs> to see how that goes. Uh, also with some house cleaning things, I have been working on the joygasm.tv website and I'm in the process of adding three new sections to the website itself. So, uh, to be more specific, it's there, there will be three new pages and I'll probably get into more detail about that. Once it goes live, I'm still having to finish building the pages and add in all the necessary, uh, fixings, if you will polish that sort of thing also um i wanted to talk about um world holidays and i started talking to you steve about this uh, a little while back but seeing as how we have an international listening audience i thought the least we could do was to actually on a weekly basis look and see what kind of holidays are going on around the world. And so this week we have uh, three. Mm. We have three holidays. It's a good weekend. The first one is Happy Australia Day. Oh, that's right. I saw something on Facebook about that. Yeah, it transpired this past Monday on the 28th, and I was doing some research on it. Apparently Australia Day is the official national day of Australia, celebrated annually on, uh, well, this actually says it's, it's celebrated annually on the 26th of January. So I'm not sure why... My calendar says it was on the 28th. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. But uh, anyway, perhaps uh, some some good-hearted Aussie folk could uh, enlighten us with that. But it marks the anniversary of the 1788 arrival of the first fleet of British ships at Port Jackson, New South Wales, and the raising of the flag of Great Britain at Sydney Cove by Governor Arthur Phillip. I had no idea. Hmm. The second holiday uh, was Happy Northland Anniversary Day in New Zealand. And this also took place on apparently Monday the 28th. Auckland Anniversary Day is a public holiday observed in the northern half of the North Island of New Zealand, being the area's provincial uh, anniversary day. It is observed throughout the historic Auckland province um, even though apparently the provinces of New Zealand were abolished in 1876, but I guess it's kind of more of a, a traditional holiday. So uh, hope the uh, Aussies and the uh, Kiwis are having a good time. I just want to go see the Shire. I want, I want Shire Day. I just want to be able to go visit both those places. I mean, I, those are on my bucket list for sure. And finally, last but not least, St. Valero's Feast in Spain. I'm getting hungry. Happened on Tuesday, the 29th. And um, from what I could gather, I think it's 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 almost kind of a Catholic feast day uh, where the Catholic Church assigns one date out of the year for each and every um, 
canonized saint, which honestly, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it's known as the Saints Feast Day. The saints are remembered on their individual feast days with a special mention, prayers, and possibly a scripture reading. So, um, again, very different, but very neat to learn holidays that transpired. So, hope everyone's having a good time. Does, do people get days off for work and days off of school? Because that's important, Russ. That is a very good question. I have, unfortunately, no idea. Why don't you look it up? Why don't you, why don't you get on that, Russ? Do your homework. Uh, you, know, you know, Steve, why, since you thought of it, why don't you go ahead and look it up? Because I've got enough on my plate here, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Step into our javelins and uh, kick the tires and light the fires and get on with our topic of the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, Steve, but I love being all squished into my javelin. You know, I, the way they have this thing pictured uh, with all the, like the cotton stuff that's inside the, you know, the padding uh -huh. inside the javelin. I got to think if you shared that javelin with somebody else, they would have to like soak up all your sweat. That is very true. It's kind of like, for example, when I was in uh, Canada, Canada. You know, uh, <laughs> world traveler over here, home of the um, loony and the toony. <laughs> so I remember I went to take my first snowboarding lesson. Gosh, yeah, and, I remember this. And I put on this helmet, like, oh yeah, here you go. And they gave me the helmet, and they gave me the boots, and I'm like, and I put this stuff on. It's like, and I put, you know, it's like, dude, it's all moist in this helmet. Like, you guys can't clean it out. Really, it's nasty. Russ. Did your head like break out into all kinds of zits and boils? Yeah, you know what? I think I did get a few start mm. popping out. Ugh, it's nasty, but that happens oftentimes, you know. So you got to think. Okay, you're in combat. You're jumping around, flying around. Things get hot. You got you know jets on your back and stuff, carrying around heavy equipment. You're gonna be sweating like a like a like a horse. Just what ran. if there's technology in there that just cools you down? What if there's like liquid cooling technology well, I don't see inside any, the cushions? Steve. I don't see anything in the lore or in the codex you or anything about the read technology. The lore. I've read enough. There's only a few paragraphs. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's not enough to really get interested in it. Well, well, and also it's your javelin, Steve. I don't think anybody else is using your javelin. Oh, so I get uh, it's like wearing the same pair of clothes for six weeks. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, it's just, it's, you know, it's just my oil and my sweat. No problem. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows? With you flying in the air, maybe it cools you down. That's uh, maybe they, they're like little vents that have nice fresh breeze air coming through and cooling your pits. Mm. Probably weak spots. Get, we have get talked shot right there. far too long about this. Let's go into our topic of the day, which of course is the Anthem game demo. So, initially we had some issues with getting in, but everybody had issues, Russ. More we than did. We, we yes, everybody did have issues. Um, I feel bad for Casey Hudson. Uh, we were looking at his Twitter feed, and there were many people who were all fire and brimstone on there. And I mean, it's, it is what it is. Luckily it is a game demo. It wasn't like the game actually launched and was released and had all these problems. And that's actually the main reason why you do these kind of soft launches at the beginning to make sure you can iron out the bugs. But luckily we were able to get in and play with big baby Moose. And we had ourselves a, a little trifecta going on, which was really nice. So, I'm going to go first this time. No. Oh, yeah. 
I can tell you right away that um, my my fears have been put to rest in terms of whether or not I was going to enjoy this game because watching E3, I definitely like the style, the art direction, that sort of thing, but I was unclear on the gameplay itself. And especially after playing um, Destiny 2 for many hours and knowing that they were kind of coining this as the, the quote unquote Destiny killer, I was kind of nervous going into it because I was like, okay, I, this, this game needs to be fun because I, personally, I don't find Destiny 2 to be that fun. I think it's okay if I get together with a couple of buddies and we go romping through, do some raids or whatever, but as a just a overarching play experience, I just, I, it's not a game I, I can't wait to play. Luckily with Anthem, that is definitely not the case. As soon as I got in, I was loving the world. I thought that going into the Javelin itself and the fly mechanic is is so satisfying. I mean, like you're in there and it doesn't take a, a lot of effort to be able to get the hang of it, which is, I mean, that's a big deal because you're not just moseying along. I mean, you're blasting around at a pretty quick pace. And looking at, at just the, the vistas, where we're going, I just, I was, I was very happy with about, I mean, we played probably for about an hour or two, didn't we? Mm, yeah, we did. I played for, you were able to play longer, yeah. uh, but yeah, overall, definitely looking forward to, I hear that, that um, this weekend they're going to make it the demo available once again to be able to come in. Hopefully they'll have some of the, the server issues ironed out. Definitely looking forward to it. What'd you think, Steve? Well, I think if Warframe and Destiny had a baby, this would be it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, I think they're taking a little bit too many cues, maybe from both. Because in Warframe, <clears throat> I didn't play a whole lot of it, but you you do move fast and and like jumping might as well be flying because you, you just <laughs> fly across the screen. But they still have the the white text or the numbers pop off the enemies when you're getting not so sure. weak places and then yellow numbers when you are hitting good places, you know, <laughs> the good spots. Uh, so we have three games now with that, you know, the same kind of deal. Um, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I think they're, I don't know. I started playing the game and I thought, okay, what, what is, what were my concerns when I first started watching you know, on, on E3 when they revealed the game, and you and I were both confused, like what the story was, right? And so, and we and we still honestly don't even know what the story is, right? I mean, so we had the demo, and they they do give you some information um, in the codex. You walk around and you you look stuff up, but nothing really makes any kind of sense at all. So the jury's still out because the the whole game's not out yet. But um, walking around, talking to people. It's still, I mean, the real meat of the game is actually getting in your javelin, flying around, shooting. Yeah. Um, and that part was just beautiful. I'm, I'm really am thankful that you can fly because if you, it was just more of like a ground game, I, it would be missing a bunch. Well, and two, just in terms of, of the flying mechanic in the game, one of the problems that I found in Destiny was that in Destiny, you're you're always on the ground. Like, yeah, you had the ability to kind of jump up a little bit, but as a general rule, you were just, you're always on the ground. You're just moving around doing your thing. And to the environmental artist's credit, they tried to introduce some verticality into the game, but you couldn't really fully enjoy the verticality and all of its splendor because you were just always on the ground. I think that's really cool about um, Anthem is if I wanted to, to fly up somewhere, I mean, you, you have a, a huge sensation of freedom as you're traversing through this world. And, you know, if you're on the ground for a while and then you decide you're going to go flying straight up or if you want to hover for a while and get situational awareness, you can do that. Then dive back down. There, there are... Um, so many different types of, of approaches you can take with this that ultimately make me feel as though, hey, this is like a much more of a, of a living, breathing world. Um, I, I just, I really thought it was super cool. Also, the other thing too is that in terms of the gameplay mechanics, let's talk about combat. So 
I personally, from the the weapons that I was was experimenting around with um, using the Ranger, I thought the weapons felt really good. I like the way they sounded. I really do also like the button mapping. I like how you have your your kind of go to assault rifle or, or you know what whatever kind of of um, battle rifle that you may have. But then you also have the left bumper that has a weapon. You have the right bumper that has a weapon. If you press both bumpers down, that's another weapon. And then of course you can charge up your ultimate and press up on the D pad. That unleashes, of course, your most powerful weapon that you have on you. I think that that, like each one of those just felt really good. It just, it, it matched the world that they were in. And most importantly, it was just fun to deploy. It like any one of those weapons, it was so fun to be able to aim up and, you know, get your sights all set up and then deploy one of those weapons, see the type of explosions that happen, be able to see the splash damage. It was the perfect balance between having like the controls feel tight and right and also having the eye candy effect of just like like watching these these magnificent explosions or just the kinetic energy from other types of weaponry i was i was very happy about that what do you think yeah i was too i although some of the guns started to sound really close to the same i mean when you and granted, it's a demo, and you, you you only have a certain amount of guns. I, I started to get some of the rare uh, uh, arms that you can get, and you know, I couldn't really tell what everybody else was using because everybody's guns started to sound the same. Or if you switch to like a machine pistol versus uh, you know uh, an assault rifle, those sounded the same. Uh, sometimes the sniper rifles sounded a little bit different. Um, yeah, you've you've used quite a few more of the weapons than I have. Right. I, I think it really com- bears down to which javelin you're going to use because some use certain weapons, some you some can't use those weapons, and so then you'll there there'll be some some variants. For example, if you're the Colossus, you can handle some of the bigger guns. Mm-hmm. You have you have the the strength for it. But if you're you're more of the tank class. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And if you're the the Tempest, well, you're not really going to be handling much the Tempest. more. Tempest. Are you talking about the Storm? Or the Storm. Yeah. I thought his name was Tempest. Maybe that maybe that's what I named my javelin. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyhow, actually, I think I did. Anyway, it stuck with me. <laughs> I made a good skin for him too. Oh, good. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. <laughs> anyhow, so. Yeah, I, I would like to see some more sound effects in it. They're, they definitely felt like they had kick, uh, which is good. And that's mm-hmm. what you want in a, in a gun-driven game. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that they used... There, there's like a quick, hard bass sound effect that I think they used a little bit too prevalent, where if it was a, an explosion, uh, they would do it. If you got hit, they would do the same sound effect. Or if you landed hard, it'd be the same sound effect. <laughs> oh wow! And so I thought uh, it's in it, but here's the thing too: it's a hard game to have turned up loud because of that hard, if that that intense quick bass. Uh, because it's such a hard knock, you might blow your speaker or your sub. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, again, it's the demo; it's not complete yet. I hope they just have some other sound effects oh, thrown I'm in sure. there. Yeah, Bioware is known for having just a huge assortment of sound effects in their games. I, yeah. I'm not concerned about that at all. Going back to the combat mechanics, though, um, did you find that you just naturally got into the groove of, of just deploying your weapons, or were you confused, or did you have any like struggles with taking out the enemy? It felt more natural with certain javelins than other javelins. Okay. Uh, so when I was the ranger, mm-hmm. and when I was the there's like the, a real weak but quick interceptor. Class. Interceptor, thank you. Uh, those felt. Pretty much the same, and I, and I and I didn't really. It didn't dawn on me to use a lot of the, the weapons because I didn't. They, they were effect- you just stuck with like the battle rifle. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, they weren't very memorable, so I kind of forgot that I had them. Oh man, they're so cool. Uh, so but with the Colossus, it was definitely very useful, and definitely with the Storm, it there was you have the elements of your right. to your control, which is kind of interesting because you're a, a mech. But anyway, I'm not complaining. Science. <laughs> So, but that one, yeah, I was using, I was just web fingers, touching all the buttons and I'm casting fire and ice and wind. (laughs) 
So Anyhow. that's the one that Big Baby Moose has laid claim on. Yeah, we'll see about that, Russ. Because <laughs> you can be a couple of the different of the same javelins. You know? Uh huh. There might be a bunch of a uh, bunch of ice everywhere when next time we play. You that's know? very true. And then it'd be up to you to uh, to lay down some fire. Since you have tested out all four of the javelins, do you have a favorite? It would either be yeah, either the the Colossus or. Or the storm. Okay. Reason being is, yeah, like I said before, uh, just a, a complete change up with how the, the 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 javelin feels, their weapons, but also how they move. They fly different. Uh, they run different. Uh, they they have different sound. You know, weight distribution. Uh, different sound when you fly. Mm -hmm. And so the tempest has a lighter sound because he's you mean lightweight. storm. Ah, oh, gosh. That's why I'm here. You know what? I just, I just love the name. Keep you uh, on track. So, anyhow, I claim, I, that, that's what I'm going to claim. No one can name their Storm Tempest because that's my <laughs> name. So, anyhow, I mean, that one kind of floats around and, and the, the jets look different on him. And he, he looks really cool. The Colossus, he's boom, just stomping along. He's a tank. He's a tank. Uh, the, the jet on his back looks different when it fires up and it sounds different. And so, you know, he's he's definitely, he, he, he's cool. It's just that the other two just really, they didn't obviously look the same, but they felt the same. Sure. And it could be because I'm not sure if Bioware implemented all the abilities that the the, what, what, the Interceptor could do. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that was the case. Maybe I just played him completely wrong. I'm not going to rule that out. But Well, I mean, you have to remember, this is a game demo. You haven't been given any kind of tutorial that I'm aware of. And so, yeah. Yeah. I think that, that the limited amount of time that you've had to play it, you're probably going off of muscle memory from what you did discover yeah. playing as like the Ranger, for instance. So you're not really leveraging the, yeah. the abilities, the special abilities of the Interceptor. Well, the Interceptor is supposed to be faster. It's supposed to be right. more close quarters. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying that out. and It, it has like some kind of knives it uses for close combat, like melee combat. Which sounds, to, which to me sounds cool. Yeah. I'm not really a distance fighter. Right. I'm more in your face. <laughs> Slap you around a little bit. So, <laughs> a bar fighter, what can I say? <laughs> So anyway, uh, I, I was I experimented with with the the interceptor, and it just didn't really feel any different than the ranger. I'll have to give it a go. I of course have not tried the other three classes. I was only um, playing as the ranger, but this weekend I'm definitely wanting to give the other three classes a try and see which one I gravitate towards. I'm very curious to see which one will get my nod. Well, it's funny because when I was playing the demo, <laughs> so when we all were playing, we were getting some experience, but we never got really past level 10. And <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, when we played it, we had a good hour just destroying everything yeah. in sight. And so anyhow, what happened to me was, since I don't have a life, <laughs> I, was, I would, I had the time to go in and wait out the load screens and the glitches and this and that. And so I would jump in into other people's games and sometimes they would just finish the level and I'd just like cap a couple people and then I would gain an entire level. And it's like, oh, here, you got the opportunity to get a new javelin. I'm like, great, thanks. And so I, by the end of the demo, I was like level, I, I think I'm either level 13 or 14. Yeah, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think they were saying that you could get as high as level 15 in the demo. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's level 15. So I went out on my own just to do free roam and I, I found like this big dude I should probably destroy. <laughs> <laughs> you bully. Yeah. He's hey, big. There, there's something alive. I'm just going to go shoot it. <laughs> so uh, I found a nice little spot to perch and the game. I wonder if I can get a perfect pelt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring this back home and turn it in for some coins. Yeah. <laughs> and so I found a spot and I was kind of hidden behind a rock and I just like camp there and was going pat 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 and he was trying to throw rocks at me and it didn't work and the ai wasn't didn't figure it out so i thought easy peasy i'm done and then i hardly got any experience hmm. so i don't know whatever that is so the coin system did you ever get any coins i don't remember because i never got any more coins and i was putting in time and so i had like 20 i don't forget how much they give you from the start but i mean i i got down to 15 after spending on certain stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I never got past 15 ever again. So you, you didn't, you, you don't remember how many coins you had? 
I don't know. That was not something I was really paying attention to. And I, in my time, I really only played for a couple of hours. Yeah. So well, uh, let's pivot over to the, um, the menus because the, I've been, this was, this was another aspect of the game that I was not sure how I was going to take it. And I'm very happy to say that I really do dig the menu systems that are in this game. And if I compare them to Destiny, see Destiny, one of the biggest issues I had um, with that game is their, their whole menu structure is so confusing and it's so discombobulated and unnecessarily complex. And it was, it was almost as if whoever was the, the, uh, the copywriter was just having way too much influence on how to make things sound like overly fancy mm. to the point where I'm like, wait, where is what? And like, and even like the, the button mapping as to how you would access the world map versus your character screen of what you're trying to equip your armor and everything. I mean, everything was just so complicated and confusing and it just it really um, brought down the fun factor of the game. What's great about Anthem is there are certain similarities in terms of the approach to the menu system, but it's like it's what the Destiny menu system should have been all along. And I had no problem like going through and customizing the, the paint job of my, of my Javelin and being able, yeah, tag it. Yeah, that looks good. As well as like just just get upgrades <laughs> on the various body parts of the javelin. T O A T O A. Oh, I see what you're. I see what you're doing there. Three sixty. Yeah. So that was really really cool to be able to to realize. Also, too, when you're going from like say mission to mission, you're walking through the the city and you're talking to key personnel who provide like little side missions for you. Or if you want to be able to go and do free play, all of those different um, loadouts were very easy to be able to go through and navigate. I mean, I, I, I never, I think the only time I got a little lost was I was in the, the javelin equip screen and, and specifically I, I was looking at trying to like change colors and paint and that sort of thing. And I just didn't realize that you had to press the right D pad, like the right side of the D pad in order to get to like one of the paint colors. That was the only time that I was stumped. Everything else I just very methodically and naturally navigated through and figured out it was not a problem. And once again, I also liked the layout of the, of the UI. I, I liked the, the button mapping associated with it. That's, a, that's in my book, that, that was just a big relief and a huge win. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just digging it. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. I think there needs to be a little more detail. You, you have a ton of different surface textures you can choose from bare metal aged metal rusted metal clean metal and whatever whatnot and uh I'm giving you those texture options yeah so uh which is cool but there's so many of them that look like identical <laughs> i like you know i was i mean it's not like a terrible thing but i can totally these, see myself spending hours in that menu. oh i know i know i finally gave up i was i was it was an afternoon i thought yeah you know i'm just gonna you know tinker a bit and so then my like i said the other day my javelin now looks like a junkyard stormtrooper it was like i'm trying to i at what was a good idea ended up being a tragedy and so i, I mean it look it's whatever you know <laughs> i mean i can't i kind of can't wait till you see it because you're gonna be like steve <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's. It Steve's. looks like confetti. Like if confetti yeah. could vomit <laughs> upon itself, that's what it, it looks it's like. like okay. It's like if you were going to like an ugly sweater party, but like that's the only piece of clothes you had in your wardrobe. That's my javelin. Awesome. So there you go. I look forward to it. I'm sure I will be able to easily spot you among the chaos. Or you might just think I'm an enemy because I'm that ugly. <laughs> Why does everybody keep firing on me? This doesn't make sense. Now, going back to the whole um, UI and menus, do, so did you like how the whole structure was laid out? Yeah, I, I did. It, it's kind of, 
<laughs> you know, the, the, the colors are all kind of angled to the right kind of diagonal. And so I thought, okay, good. Am I going down or I'm going diagonal <laughs> or, I, you know, so I mean that, <laughs> that took it like one extra thought. And then, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> And that one, I know that's the spot you're thinking of because it doesn't tell you to go like the arrow over right to choose something else. You just kind of figure it out on your own. So, but I mean, once you get it, of course, it's, you know, whatever. But yeah, I mean, it could use a little more self explanation. Expl- ex- explanation. Explanation. Direction. Yeah. Instruction. You're right, right. So I'm, I'm going to be forgiving. I'm going to say, you know, it's a demo. They got to iron out some stuff. Maybe, maybe people who are, after they get over being upset of how stuff wasn't working that they could you know maybe touch on stuff they did like that was working well in conclusion for me very happy with what I have experienced I'm looking forward to putting more time into the game during the demo weekend this weekend I I, am really happy I, I would say the only foggy portion of the game at this point is just the story because I just don't know right. what, what the motives are what the purpose is any of the the exposition conflict, I've I've heard some some really kind of nebulous details here and there, but I honestly I don't I just don't know what it's about. But that's that's literally the only kind of lingering thing that's that's on my radar. Everything else, I'm really happy about. I love the the gameplay. I especially think it's a lot of fun to be able to have like three or four people, like three or four of your buddies come together and play co-op through all the different missions. The flight mechanic is brilliant. It really does add a whole nother level of dimensionality to the, the vertical space. Um, the graphics engine itself is, I think, is very beautiful. That's something that we didn't really talk too much about, but just especially if I compare it to Destiny, um, the graphics engine is, I, to my opinion, is there's no comparison. I think that Anthem's graphics are superior. Um, the the sound effects and stuff, like like to your point, I didn't really hear too much. Again, I didn't I didn't play a lot, and and so I have just have your comments to go off of, but. If it did sound limiting, I do think that it's probably just due to the game demo itself. So, yeah, unless there's something else that I come across this weekend, I'm very excited for the game. What are your concluding thoughts? Oh, well, my concluding thoughts, I'm glad you asked. So, <laughs> <laughs> one thing we, I, I didn't really mention much because, uh, I mean, I kind of just wanted to get out in there and, into the action, but any kind of wandering around the town for me was just kind of a missed opportunity. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that there that it's going to look a little more polished because for me, I mean, I'm not running an Xbox One X, but uh, there was just a ton of glitching here and there, um, stuff not loading, and just low, low frame rate. Even some of the acting was just kind of like, I, maybe it's because again I've been spoiled well, from, from Red Dead, but you're thrusted also into like kind of the middle of the story because you're starting out at level ten. You're not even at level one. Right. So you know, we have no idea like what the heck is going on. Right. I'm just saying that I'm I have hopes for the game and these are my concluding thoughts, Russ. Hey, not a problem. I did recognize an actor by the way. Ooh. I recognized the voice and I looked him up and I was correct. Uh Nick Terabay. Terabay. T A R A B A Y. You would know him if you watched Spartacus. For example, the Spartacus series okay. on Stars. He was also in Pacific Rim. Um, he was also in the in the show uh, Arrow. Taken. He's in Taken hmm. also. So, I think when when people hear him, they'll they'll definitely recognize him. Um, so yeah. Another concern I have is that I do want it to be deeper. I do want the missions to be long. I want them to be drawn out. I want the story to be fleshed out. I just don't want it to be like, you know, you spend 60 bucks in the game and then you have to continue to grind through the same missions, you know, 20,000 times because that's going to wear it pretty thin. I I would love it to have. And and again, I didn't play Destiny, but from everybody that I know that had played Destiny, they say it's a grind. It really is. I'm glad you brought that up. That was another nail in the coffin for me regarding Destiny 2 was just you have these timed events that are going on all the time and during the the PvE scenarios and it is so boring. I cannot believe that there are players who are willing to put themselves through it, but it's you go to the exact same locations on the map and 
you have the exact same scenario play out where like some kind of mining ship lands for the 50,000th time <laughs> yeah. and the exact same bad guys come out and enemies and you have to take them out. And it's all in order to try and get some kind of loot box that, that spawns and maybe you'll get some kind of legendary gear or whatever, but it is literally a rinse and repeat setup like that. I, I, oh man, I, it is, it, it is, not fun. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Well, and, and that's one of the things that I'm, I'm hoping for in this game is that. So, to be clear, a timed event as a concept is not a bad thing. Right. I think it's a cool thing. However, I think that it needs to be procedural in that you never know where the timed events will spawn on the world map. So that way there's always this sense of unpredictability going on. And then that will always keep things fresh. Also, when the timed event occurs, you got to also have the types of enemy drops or whatever it is that's going on during that time to also be procedural as well because it's just, it gets super boring to like have to, f it's, let me back up. <laughs> it's, You're better. Basically, it sucks when you know you're being forced to grind. And paid full price for the game. Exactly. I think that when you are able to identify something as like, wow, this is the, the only reason why this exists is because the developers want me to put in tons and tons and tons of hours into their game, but they literally have no idea how to keep players playing the game. So what we're going to do is we are going to make super rare items that hardly ever appear and it's gonna force them to like rinse and repeat, go through this this like perpetual state of like opening up your map and looking for the next timed event that spawned in the exact same places. I mean, it, it, it yeah. Well, I, I'm not even gonna get. St I've already like I can tell my my blood pressure is going up with that. Well, what they'll do, what they might do too is they go, okay, well if you don't want to grind, then you can pay X amount of dollars and you just get it. So they're, they're taking the, the microtransaction route that they were under fire for <laughs> with like, you know, Star Wars and whatever, whatnot. And then, you know, EA is getting this bad reputation. Hopefully they won't do it this route. But, um, and yeah, you know, it's one thing if you, you buy a free game, League of Legends, I don't know, something on the mobile bit heroes, for example, because something completely free to play. And then, yeah, okay, it's a grind, whatever. Or you want to spend some money, here you go. You didn't spend anything on the game. So yeah, you know, if you want to make some microtransactions, fine, because the thing was free. But if you spend 60 bucks and then you're forced to grind or to spend more money to enjoy the game, that's going to rub people thin pretty quick. Did you have any other final thoughts? No, that was my final thought. It was It's just my expectations are I'm trying to keep them high because of, you know, E3. So I'm, I'm the jury's out because it's a bad demo. It was a beta, beta demo, basically. But... What, what's been happening so far has has me a little concerned. Let me just put it that way. But are, are there any things uh, about the game that uh, makes you excited? Um, Happy? Twitter-pated? Mm -hmm. Twitter-pated, yes. We can play it a bunch on Twitter. We can put <laughs> Sea of Thieves down. <laughs> <laughs> we can put Sea of Thieves down and, and play, play some, some Anthem. Well, that wraps up this episode of Joygasm. Make sure you tune in next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm and consider becoming a monthly contributor. You'll get exclusive perks and early access to the show, not to mention it really helps us continue doing what we love to do. Also, you can follow us on social media and YouTube. Just do a search for Joygasm TV. In addition to iTunes and Android, you can listen to our podcast on TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Spotify, and soundcloud.com slash joygasm tv last but not least search joygasm tv on twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live every wednesday night at 9 30 p.m central time and don't forget to follow us on twitch we'll see you next week see you everybody <laughs>